So just a few days ago, Filmic Pro came out with their latest app, Filmic Pro V7. Now I've already made a full video talking about some of my favorite features that came out with this new update. And in this video, I wanna share with you guys my go-to settings for using this app and filming with my smartphone. All right, so this isn't gonna be a very long video at all. I'm just gonna walk you through my settings that I use whenever I'm filming on Filmic Pro so that you can get the same results that I do. Now in a separate video, I'll be going into editing, talking about how I actually edit this footage with my other cameras in DaVinci Resolve. But before we actually jump into the new Filmic Pro, I wanna thank you guys so much for all the love and attention that you've been giving me on social media over the past few days. So I've been creating for over two years now and I feel like I'm just now getting attention online and that's because of you guys sharing my content that helps these bigger brands see these videos so that I can get more opportunities to create more content that actually helps you as a creator on this channel. Okay, so jumping right in, if we we click right up here at the top, you can see that this is the encoding process that I typically will use. So here's the thing. I understand that ProRes 422 10-bit may be a higher quality option when filming from the iPhone using Filmic Pro. But whenever I'm trying to film shots on my iPhone and match them to my Sony cameras or to a Blackmagic camera, I found it much easier to use these settings instead of ProRes so far. Now I'm not saying that it hasn't gotten better and that you can't do it. I'm just saying in my own personal testing, I found it much easier to work with these files than I have found it to work with ProRes. Okay, so moving on to the profile that I use, I actually film in Log V3. The reason why I do this is because I want a very flat profile so that I can add in all the colors and all the information that I want to later. Now, if you check out the playlist above me, you'll see exactly what I mean in my editing tutorial on color grading footage directly from this phone. And in that video, I will actually upload some sample clips so that you guys can follow along and color grade with me while I'm doing it on screen. Okay, so let's jump over here to the other side of the screen. So if we go under our shutter speed, I typically will always try to do one over 60 or double whatever my frame rate is. And so in this case, that's 30 frames per second. And going over here to our ISO, I will adjust this as needed. I typically try not to go above 800 because that's when you introduce a lot of noise. Now, obviously, if you choose these settings and you go and film outside, you're gonna notice that it is way too bright. And even in an environment like this, these settings are gonna be way too bright. So in those cases, I will put an ND filter on my camera so that I can maintain these same settings so that I can make sure that my footage is looking nice and natural coming out of this device and I can actually match it to my other camera angles. So for you guys who are interested in the ND filter that I actually use, I'll leave it linked below in the description. Okay, so going up here to our white balance, I will typically always have it set to 5600. Now, if I'm carrying it around a color checker or some type of gray card, here's what I'll do. I'll hit auto white balance, I'll put that color checker or that gray card right in front of the camera and I'll make sure that obviously gray is filling up most of the screen and then I will tap again on auto white balance and that's gonna lock your white balance based off of that gray card which means you're gonna get pretty good colors coming straight out of the camera. And from there, I will actually save those to one of my presets. Typically, I will always save it to the B preset because I have the A preset set to 5600. So the way that you do that is you actually tap and hold and you're gonna get this setting right here. And you can hit save current values to preset, and now you have that locked into your camera. And the reason why I do this is because I don't wanna accidentally turn off auto white balance lock and then forget exactly what the white balance was at. So now every time I can just go over here to this setting and know that if I'm filming in the same environment, those colors are gonna be as consistent as can be. Now, if I'm still struggling to expose my image properly, I will click down here and I will click again and you actually get a histogram that will show you a meter of where your image is. And so basically, if this graph is touching the top, then that means that your image is obviously way overexposed. And if it's all the way at the bottom, like this right here, then that means that your image is way underexposed. Now, another way that you can actually check your image is by using something called false color. So you click that on and you're actually gonna see you get all of these colors. Now, if you guys are interested in what those colors actually mean, I'll be leaving a chart on the screen right now and you'll be able to measure your colors to make sure that you're not filming too bright 
where you don't want it to be too bright, where you're not having dark areas where you don't want to have dark areas. Okay, so honestly, we're pretty much done. The only thing that I would change from here is my audio. So first, I'm gonna click this audio meter right over here so that I can get more information. Next, I'm gonna click the microphone, and typically, I will use an external microphone like a lavalier, or I will run a boom directly to this that's very easy to do. If you guys would like a video about that, I can make one. And from there, I'll just adjust my audio to wherever I want it to go. That's pretty much it. It's pretty easy to do all of these things. And if you want more fine tune settings, you can obviously do that by going to the gear over here. You can go to audio and you have a few more settings over here to adjust. All right, so I understand how hard it can be whenever you're trying to create content as a beginner. That's why I have created this channel, Social Vibes, to help people who are starting out in the content creation realm and they wanna learn some tips and tricks to help improve their process. Now, along the way, I've actually advanced in my skills to where I feel like I can tailor to some more advanced creators as well. And so I wanna host all types of content for all skill sets on this channel. So if you guys have any content that you would like to see, then please leave them in the comment section below using the link where you can submit video ideas that you would like to see on this channel and honestly seeing you guys comment that these videos actually help you brings me so much happiness so with that being said if you guys are interested in some more content about this new filmic pro update then i definitely recommend that you check out this playlist right over here